how many kids my age can say, I got a scuba certification? Like, not a lot. We're here in Landlock, Colorado. Teaching kids to scuba dive and the importance of marine science and ocean conservation. Through a scholarship of a lifetime. Congratulations guys, I'm excited to get started. Last episode, the kids got fitted with their new gear, and today is their first day of training, where they're learning the ropes of what it takes to become scuba divers, and Fatima starts her swim lessons. Here we go. My name is Ken Christopher, I will be your dive instructor, and I will also be going with you guys on your trip to Florida. Classroom time is just an opportunity for me to determine that you guys are good on your reading and you understand the principles that you covered in the reading. Today in class we will be covering the introduction to scuba diving, expectations of the class, what they're going to be getting out of it, and I'll also be introducing them to the equipment that is used for scuba diving. Number one rule of scuba diving is you never hold your breath. Who here plays sports? How many times do you practice? Diving can be kind of intimidating with all the gear and technical information and you're breathing underwater. But what the students are learning today is that it all comes with practice. And if it feels a little difficult at first, that's okay. As they improve and gain confidence, they'll become safe scuba divers and have a healthy respect for the ocean. And one of the things you guys are going to learn in this class is how to get close without disturbing anything. And to make sure that your impact on the ocean is minimal. Never chase anything. Generally speaking, if you're quiet and still, you will be ignored by most of the living things and they'll just swim right by you. Let the environment come to you in so many ways, like that's so rewarding. I turned around and there was like literally just a loggerhead this big <laughs> right behind me and he hung out with us for like an hour. I want you guys to grab your gear bags. I've officially tried on all the gear. It fits perfectly. Thank you guys so much. And just have them by you because we're going to start going through your gear. Snorkel feels good. Um, flippers. That's a common mistake. These are fins and those are flippers. It'll be fun to be able to use it for the first time. So the kids have all new gear and it's imperative whether you're a new diver or not that you know your gear. All right, so we have our masks and we have our snorkels. Pull this down and to like separate it, kind of pull that down. Everyone put your masks on. Does anyone feel tight? Like uncomfortably like my eyeballs are gonna pop out tight? No? Okay. Because scuba diving is so equipment intensive, it's important to have quality gear that you can rely on. Now the very first thing you guys do when you get a tank is you're gonna smell it. Because this air inside of your tank came from outside and it went through a cleaning process and it went through a compressor and it went into this tank. So you wanna make sure, what should air smell like? Give it a smell. <laughs> <laughs> if that equipment were to malfunction or were to fail them on a dive, we are also going to be talking about emergency skills and what they can do in the event that their equipment does fail. Whenever your air is on and you can't breathe, let somebody know something's gone awry. Does it taste funny? Does your air... So you, that is upside down. So when you put it in your mouth, there you go. <laughs> so your tank is filled with 3,000 PSI of air. That's a lot. If you are out of air and you are looking for air, where are you going to go for air? In an out of air situation, every diver is going to go looking for the nearest regulator, even if it's the one in your mouth that you're breathing off of. So you want to be prepared. So by having the ability to add and remove air from your BC, you control your buoyancy in the water. What day is it? Wednesday. Shouldn't I be helping Kathy right now with something? Nah, she's got it. So fins maximize propulsion and minimize effort. Think about how small your foot is, the surface area of your foot compared to these fins. In a few months, you guys are gonna do a swim test. That means you guys are gonna swim 10 down and back in the pool. 
when you do your swim test, you will be allowed to use your fins. So if any of you were concerned about the physical fitness test, the swim test, look at how much water you'll be able to move. Last time I tried to swim, like, it didn't go so well. I almost drowned, but you know, I just had to give another shot. I was out here thinking it was gonna be all bad and stuff like oh what if I drown and stuff like that but yet again it was just like first day jitters of like knowing how to swim we tried a couple of times you know teaching in swimming pools and all that and she really didn't have any interest yeah. and then um, we went to Cancun and we're in the cenotes and that's when she was just you know, she wanted to learn, so. <laughs> I mean, at first, I was like scared because like, I was like, what if I like suck like really bad? <laughs> and like, they have to like start from like square one, but. She's doing awesome. She's like very ambitious. She's ready to learn. I don't know, I felt like I was gonna sink in. Like, I don't know why, but then like I started doing it. I was like, this is cake. I was like, I can do this. But yeah, I, can't, I just can't breathe. <laughs> It wasn't that bad. Like, I, mean, yeah. I guess I was just worried because it was the first day. You know, because the water is a somewhat alien environment to people when you first start. I guess also it's just like we're not used to being underwater that far and being able to breathe, and it's just a really cool experience. It really is. I salivate when I scuba dive. <laughs> so, any questions about your gear? We are done for today, so I want you guys to neatly pack up your stuff. Scuba diving is just a lot more technical than I thought it would be. There's so much about just how your gear works, and like how to put it on, and how to use it, and safety, and all that stuff. And it, it's really cool that like all that allows us to do something we wouldn't be able to do when we can breathe underwater, which is um, really cool. <laughs> Next episode, we're off to Steamfest. Don't miss it. I put up with.